Hey everyone, I've put together a compilation of some of the best single-player games ever made. Now, this list isn't exhaustive, it only includes games that I've personally played and enjoyed. So, let's dive in. And remember, this list isn't ranked in any particular order. Mafia Definitive Edition Mafia Definitive Edition is an amazing game. Now hear me out. This game is pretty linear. The story is divided into different chapters, and you can wrap it up in under 10 hours. This game is amazing. If you like The Godfather and GTA, this is like The Godfather theme made in the style of GTA. The city and environment look thriving, beautiful, and historic. The setting and atmosphere are so convincing. There are old-style bars, cafes, grocery stores, factories, offices, apartments, Chinatown, town, Little Italy, all over the city. It's not exactly open world because each mission starts up immediately and automatically after the last mission was finished, but you still get to see much of the world. If you like GTA missions and shooting, it's very similar. Maybe it doesn't quite have the same fluidity and polish as GTA, but it's still a lot of fun. I actually really like the way the guns feel, but the game has a free roam mode where you can just freely explore the beautiful city. I admit that there are not many activities you can do. The Mafia remake hardly utilizes the open world setting whatsoever. There are no optional activities. There should have been some side missions to make the world even more interesting. Nonetheless, I enjoyed it. Yakuza 0 is one of my favorite games of all time. It has a sensational story, decent combat, an immersive world, and deep characters. It has a slow start, but once you meet the main three antagonists, it kickstarts for real. If you're someone who enjoys anime and crime dramas, this is for you. I give it a smooth 9 out of 10. It's rare for a game to be so engaging with so many memorable moments. There are a lot of things to do in the dense world of this game, and every one of them feels whole. You can see that the devs really put a lot of thought into every aspect of this game. Kingdom Come Deliverance. First played this game in 2020, around three years ago, and honestly, this game requires a lot of patience. It's a game set in realism. Things that would take a few seconds in another RPG take much more time. And I mean time in real life. This is definitely one of the most believable game worlds you can play in. The world is harsh and brutal. Combat is a touchy one. Despite having a lot of fun with this game, there is a huge amount of content in it. This game has hundreds of hours of content. I had a great time with the game, but I cannot easily recommend this title to anyone. The game requires a huge amount of patience from the player to learn the world and to properly interact with its systems. Also, one thing I would like to talk about is the sound design. It's freaking great. Moving on different terrain is very noticeable to the point where you can almost center your horse on roads based on the sounds the hooves make. Combat sounds are especially impressive. Red Faction Guerrilla still holds up as one of the best open-world destruction games. I have nothing to argue here. It's a dumb fun game which lacks in many areas, but all of these have the counter-argument that you can destroy things the whole time in a way that hasn't really been matched. I think all the Red Faction games have similar pros and cons. The others are all linear shooters rather than open-world. Sometimes I would just run around with the sledgehammer and destroy stuff in different ways to watch it collapse. Even to this day, this game has no other competitors. I've seen about one that had better destruction, but it had zero combat. You can engage in quick gameplay when you have a limited amount of time. The game is basically an open world with main missions and side missions. There is no order that each mission needs to follow. I like how sometimes the objective is not to kill all of the enemies in a particular location but to create diversions that allow you to get the mission done. It's a must-own game if you love destruction and its physics, with a decent open world filled with repetitive yet fun activities. Mad Max. This game is criminally underrated. I'm not saying it's a masterpiece, but the world, ambience, and overall feel are great. Games that tie in with films are rarely good, but Mad Max is certainly an exception. The core gameplay loop sees you constantly exploring and engaging in incredibly satisfying vehicular and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Upgrading your car and Max adds a real sense of progression to the game and gives you a reason to wander the wasteland. While the story isn't great, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay and the stunning scenery are more than enough reasons to pick this game up. It even mocks players for getting into cars the wrong way. This is one of the few open-world games where I almost completely ignored the side content. It was so repetitive, and I was easily able to complete the main story without needing to engage much with the side content, which also made it feel kind of pointless. But notable are those awesome sandstorms, 
coming down like the hand of God to smite you if you can't get to a safe place in time. I loved the adrenaline. However, they are actually also a playable event, and if you're bold, quite survivable and even useful. Another nice detail, the shape of the terrain actually matters here, just like it would in real life. Just cause 3. Cause 3 is a great game. It's like GTA on a beautiful Mediterranean island with unbelievable movement mechanics and a lot of destruction. The gameplay is really fun, and there's a ton of content to experience. For a 2015 game, the visuals are really impressive. The map is incredibly diverse and colorful, mixing mountains, seas, beautiful fields, forests, and cities of various sizes. Using your grapple, guns, grenades, cars, or the awesome weaponized DLC Bavarian wingsuit, you can destroy trees, creatures, cars, and chaos objects related to the dictator. The challenges are really enjoyable, essentially letting you play mini-games within just cause. Collecting all videotapes unlocks an overpowered helicopter, worth it if you want to clear all bases. Mafia 2. This game has so much action and amazing story, loved playing in the 1940s and 1950s, and I love the soundtrack. The characters in Mafia 1 were great, but in Mafia 2, they are amazing. The voice acting is superb, with a cast of characters that are interesting as well as memorable. There are many fair arguments about how this game is flawed. However, you can see the foundations of a quality game being attempted. The story and world building are fantastic, consisting of elements from both The Goodfellas and The Godfather. Look, I understand that my perspective is highly biased and I may be looking through rose-colored glasses about the game, but I do think that it is a game that is criminally underappreciated. Mafia 2 is easily the best game in the entire franchise. It might even be one of the greatest open-world games ever made. The attention to detail is spot-on, the way you can go to stores and buy stuff right from the shelf before Red Dead Redemption 2 ever did it, the pricing being accurate to the time, and the story is great, but so was Mafia 1 and 3. If you're looking for a story-driven open-world game, just go for it. Yeah, they want us to give him a message before we do it. Yeah, here it is. Sleeping Dogs. Sleeping Dogs is very underrated open world game. The game needs more recognition. I hate how people always label crime open world games to be GTA clones when some games are different. It's really well executed. Once you get a grip on it, primarily being a melee combat game, and the skill trees, things get very fun. There's heaps in it for completionists, but not an overwhelming amount for people who just want the main story experience. A GTA clone that, in my humble opinion, is actually better than GTA, combined with RPG elements of grinding to level up your character. An immersive, gorgeous-looking world with polished graphics that almost perfectly replicates Hong Kong, a great storyline that kept me hooked, fun and challenging combat system, and just all round a fantastic game. If you're a fan of GTA and looking for something to play, I implore you to pick this one up. Days Gone. Days Gone is almost the same as The Last of Us, but with a bigger world to explore. I was attracted to the mechanics of riding a bike. The story is a little long, but it was presented well. You can take great pictures of the beautiful open world using the photo mode. The bike is controlled very smoothly, even on the keyboard, and its sounds and physics are also commendable. I like post-apocalyptic games, and this one is kind of unique with the whole biker gang theme. In the beginning, your weapons suck, and you'll struggle to deal with small groups of enemies. Eventually, you've got a full collection of guns, darts, and explosives that let you take on hordes of hundreds at a time. There is also a lot of stealth gameplay to take out camps of enemy humans. You also get to customize your bike a decent amount. If you're at all into open-world games and zombie apocalypse settings, give it a try. Bully now, let's talk about a game that can be called GTA School or GTA Kids, Rockstar's title Bully which hit the scene back in 2006 and is still considered one of the company's best releases, despite its rough edges. Bully's school and town might be small, but they're packed with so much stuff. You'll find some of Rockstar's quirkiest NPCs hanging out in every nook and cranny, offering up some of the weirdest and most wonderful side quests you've ever seen. Despite its compact size, the game world feels totally alive. Whether you're wandering around the boarding school or exploring the town, you'll hear kids chatting, arguing, and going about their business. They even change up their routines based on the time of day. You've got tons of freedom to interact with the world however you want, but the world also reacts to you in a logical way. Skip class and you'll get in trouble, and yeah, the school closes at the end of the day. 
The music's killer. There's always something cool to see or do. And because everything's packed into such a small space, it never feels like there's any filler. It's like a little gem of a game. <laughs> stop, stop, you'll make me actually <laughs> Deus Ex Mankind Divided. While some folks might have wished Mankind Divided lasted longer, others appreciated its concise 20 to 30 hour gameplay, finding it refreshing not to overstay its welcome. This sentiment extends to its map of Prague, which clearly prioritized quality over quantity. Sure, the game isn't one big open world, but rather a series of smaller maps. But that's what makes it shine. It takes advantage of its limited space to create detailed environments packed with activities and rich side quests. Each area is bursting with personality, immersing you fully in its world. This is what people mean when they talk about game worlds that are a joy to explore impeccable world design. You'll find yourself wanting to experience every little thing because just being in the game environment feels exhilarating. IDOS Montreal intentionally kept Prague's hub world small so players would always find something interesting around the corner, avoiding the need for bland, repetitive buildings just to fill space. It's an approach that results in a world you can truly appreciate, filled with environmental storytelling and tasty bits of lore. Dishonored series. In the Dishonored series, spanning two main games and their DLCs, you're thrown into enclosed levels without a roadmap on how to reach your objective. Each area offers multiple entry points and infiltration methods, encouraging exploration and creativity. You'll find unique details tucked away in every corner, adding depth to the world. The games emphasize player choice, allowing you to approach situations as a violent force or a stealthy ghost. It's like an open world experience in the sense that you can tackle levels in your own way, but it's contained within smallish arenas of play. This setup gives you the freedom to experiment and adapt your playstyle to each situation, making every playthrough feel fresh and dynamic. Demon's Souls. This game is an absolute classic with next-gen graphics. It's truly phenomenal and makes me question the quality of other PS5 games released so far. Bluepoint did an outstanding job, and I hope they tackle remakes of Dark Souls 1 and Bloodborne next. Demon's Souls remains one of the most visually stunning games to date, even nearly four years after its release. Its graphics fully utilize the capabilities of the PS5. Regarding the gameplay, Demon's Souls is a faithful remake of From Software's revered classic, enhanced with modern features to keep pace with contemporary gaming. You will encounter a challenging yet gratifying action RPG experience, complete with formidable bosses to conquer and intricate dungeons to navigate. If you're familiar with the Souls series, Demon Souls serves as its origin, featuring many familiar mechanics that have since become genre standards. The motion capture, textures, and audio might all be new, but the hardcore action is utterly faithful to the original offering the same brutal learning curve and sense of monumental achievement with every victory. From Software's original formula has been respected, but there are some new tweaks too, new items, armor, and weapons to covet, a change to the amount of healing grass you can carry, and new consumable grains that offer buffs as you adventure. Horizon Forbidden West the first game introduced us to Aloy and her quest to save the world from deranged machines. And in Forbidden West, her journey continues as she seeks to restore the biosphere. If you're in search of the ultimate PS5 game offering an open world, narrative-driven adventure, Horizon Forbidden West is the perfect choice. Building upon the success of Horizon Zero Dawn on PS4, Aloy's latest journey is visually stunning and brimming with thrilling robot dinosaur encounters. While some may argue that it doesn't deviate significantly from Zero Dawn or introduce groundbreaking features, Forbidden West undeniably stands out as one of the finest experiences available on PS5. And don't overlook the side quests. They offer some of the most engaging gameplay I've encountered on PS5 or any other platform in recent years. It's delightful to see some classic machines return, bringing back memories, alongside a host of new machines that took me by surprise. The upgraded skill tree in Forbidden West offers a plethora of new options to enhance Aloy's abilities, making her stronger for the challenges ahead. Discovering new weapons in various settlements is thrilling. Progressing through the game means finding even better weapons, 
giving me the upper hand against tougher enemies. I highly recommend this game to anyone looking to get immersed in a deep game world for over 30 hours. Star Wars Jedi Survivor After spending over 60 hours diving into every aspect of Jedi Survivor, I can confidently say it lives up to my expectations as a big fan of its predecessor. I'd rate it a solid 10 out of 10. I know it had some issues at the launch, but it's a great game. Visually, Jedi Survivor is stunning. Just the like Fallen Order, the attention to detail is incredible, pulling me even deeper into the Star Wars universe. Each planet has its own vibe, making exploration a real treat. Gameplay-wise, Survivor isn't drastically different from the first game, but there are some nice improvements, like expanded combat skills and perks. And bringing over Cal's abilities from the first game was a smart move, making movement feel smooth and consistent. Plus, being able to fast travel between meditation points makes getting around a lot easier, even though traveling between planets can still take a while, especially if you're a completionist. And while there's more to do off the beaten path, a lot of the optional stuff just kind of happens naturally as you play, which is a nice touch. The story is definitely worth experiencing. It's a bit predictable at times, but it fits really well with the overall vibe of the game. Personally, I preferred the darker tone of the first game, but Survivor still has a lot to offer. And while the ending left me wanting a bit more, it wraps up the character development nicely. I pretty much bought a new console just to play this game, and I picked it up at full price right after it came out. And honestly, I think it's been worth every penny. So I'd say give it a shot. Meager. God of War Ragnarok The expectations and the bar for God of War Ragnarok was so high and almost impossible to reach because God of War 2018 ended up being one of the greatest game of all time and sequels of projects historically ends up being a bit toned down. But it's safe to say that gave this series a new height with this one. They did it so well. The story, graphics, game mechanics, dialogues, character development, music, twists and turns, and so many more things makes this game truly the best God of War game of them all. Small things like devs having a humor and actually adding it to the game with clever dialogues by our characters is like the cherry on top we didn't even know we needed. I 100% recommend it to every gamer. You can basically watch just the story parts without playing the actual game and you will still find it interesting, it's a movie. Even the side quests don't feel like side quests. They legit enhance a character and their respective background in such a brilliant way that you enjoy doing them. I like how they focused on other characters as well. They definitely needed some screen time. You need to experience both God of War 2018 and Ragnarok to have this once in a lifetime of experience. This feels familiar. What? Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 is seriously amazing. If you've already played Spider-Man 2018 and Miles Morales, you gotta dive into this one. It's a must. Insomniac totally knocks it out of the park with this sequel. The story in this game is on a whole other level compared to the first two. It's way more over the top and wild, but still packed with emotional moments. The character development for both our heroes and the villains is top-notch. Overall, the story left me feeling satisfied. I gotta give props to the side missions too. Both Peter and Miles have these big side story arcs, and they're both gripping and compelling. Peter's side adventure even got me hyped for future DLC or maybe even a tease for the next game. Graphics-wise, this game is insane. Both graphical options, with ray tracing included, are mind-blowing. The city feels alive and bustling, with NPCs doing all sorts of stuff like playing tennis on rooftops. Insomniac really outdid themselves with this one. The combat is super fun too. It's a bit simpler this time around but way more action-packed with all the new abilities. They throw more enemies at you, but the new abilities help with crowd control. They streamlined the gadgets, which I think was a smart move, but I do miss some of the gadgets from the first game. The only minor downsides was playing as MJ is still not my favorite thing, but it's more bearable in this installment. Overall, this is a great game. Here you go. And now you're in much better hands. Thanks again. You've really earned how cool that costume is. Ratchet and Clank rift apart. Everything about the game is perfect. Each weapon is an absolute blast. 
combat is chaotic, but always fair and extremely well-paced. The dialogue is witty and laugh-out-loud funny in certain moments. The characters are probably what stand out the most. All of them are incredibly charming and bring life to an already vibrant world. The story is endearing and engaging. I can't really think of anything negative about the game. Buy it and I think all of the main Ratchet and Clank titles have been commercially successful, but I hope this one tops the charts because it deserves to. Hopefully they'll make another one. The Last of Us Part 1 Remake This is the best way to experience one of the best games of all time. The Last of Us will always be one of my favorite video games of all time. I think the game was very close to perfect, and this remake allows the game to become even closer to being perfect. In 2013 Naughty Dog was limited by the technology of the time on PS3, but now with this PS5 remake they were able to fully reach their original vision for The Last of Us 1. The remake shows what The Last of Us would have been like if it released in 2022 instead of 2013, and it's beautiful. The added accessibility options are incredible as they allow more players the ability to play this game, because some people might not have been able to play the original game due to the lack of accessibility options at the time, so this remake definitely justifies its existence for many reasons. The new face models of characters are much better, detailed, and looks lifelike. Also, the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers are awesome, they definitely add more immersion to the game. Same with the 3D audio. Even if you've played the original PS3 or PS4 version, the remake is totally worth getting. Almost there. They're getting closer. Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection. Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection includes the two games, Uncharted for a Thief's End and Uncharted Lost Legacy. Both games are masterpiece, with this remaster you can play the game on native 4K on your PS5, but it isn't much of jump in graphics from the original PS4 release like we saw in The Last of Us, it's just some higher textures and true 4K support, but the game is totally phenomenal in its own. In my opinion, this is undoubtedly the best Uncharted game in the series not just because of the superior graphics but also the story and gameplay. I may be biased because this was the first game I played in the series, but I have now also completed the second and third games, and while impressive for being on the PS3, they do not come close to rivaling Uncharted 4. Most importantly, I had the most fun playing this game hands down. The addition of the alert indicator on enemies and being able to mark enemies makes stealth a very viable and fun option in a lot of areas and is very satisfying to pull off. The guns feel much better in this game compared to the previous games and the controls feel very natural and easy. The story is both thrilling and heartfelt. The characters feel very real and are all lovable. The pacing of the game is great. A good balance between exploring, climbing, and encounters with enemies. The puzzles are quite simple and straightforward but feel fun. There are some epic set pieces but that are still grounded in reality. Some sequences really makes this feel like playing a very good action-adventure film. From beginning to end this is an absolute joy to play. Would highly recommend this to anyone. Onward and upward. Bloodborne. This game is extremely difficult, but almost every time you overcome a challenge, the reward is extreme. While there are a couple of places which are not exactly enjoyable because of the darkness, making out of them feels like a literal breathe of fresh air. The bosses are an aspect of this game which truly shines. While they are extremely difficult at times, Depending on your own skill set, some of the hardest bosses for others may be the easiest for you. The clothing is all unique but also balanced, so you can dress your character however without making the game drastically more difficult. Unlike Dark Souls, this game is based more on being extremely aggressive with your offense than defense. The rally mechanic makes the gameplay different from other Souls games and not very repetitive. The trick weapons keep the game refreshing instead of hitting an enemy with the same slash 10 times in a row. Overall, it was very fun to play, and I would recommend it if you liked Sekiro, Dark Souls, or any other 3D challenging game. A Plague Tale Requiem After playing the first game in 2019 and finding the second game, I'm amazed at how far the studio has come in comparison to the first game. The graphics, the gameplay, voice acting, the music score, and wow, that storyline. I've never been so gripped and emotionally invested in a game story in a long while. 
I'm beyond impressed. The creators did a magnificent job creating a magnificent storyline and impeccable characters. The angst, trauma, and heartbreak I experienced in one game alone is a testament to the dedication they placed in this masterpiece. I loved how even being in the middle of battles, walking, and conversations between characters made me feel so immersed due to the flawless cinematic feel throughout the gameplay. Lastly, I loved all the characters. This game is a huge step up to the first, made the painstaking effort I put in innocence worth experiencing the second to the fullest. Not immediately. I will need silence. Mother, I'll handle it. Yakuza like a dragon infinite wealth. I can say with full confidence that this is a quality Yakuza entry and is one of the better ones overall. RGG has refined the combat and gameplay from the previous entry on so many levels it's as if they addressed every single one of my complaints with the game and I have personally enjoyed my time with this game very much. It's hard to believe I'd be able to enjoy Yakuza in turn-based form, but it has genuinely surprised me in a very good way. Hawaii as a setting is visually stunning and is an overall nice new location to explore. Though frankly I can't say I was the biggest fan of hearing NPCs speaking English while exploring the island paradise, it kind of felt uncanny in its own way to play this franchise in a foreign land where the main protag and his party almost never speak the local language. Also the way some Japanese speaking characters use an entirely different voice actor for their occasional English lines threw me off. The class system adds a lot of variety and allows for some impressive builds that lets you tailor your team to your liking and I enjoyed playing around with it a lot. The story was pretty good overall. The game heavily relies on callbacks and references to previous Yakuza games to the point where it's highly discouraged that you play this as your first entry into the franchise. The game has a whole mechanic dedicated to memories of previous games. For people who made it this far into the franchise however, it's a lot of fan service for sure and I welcome it. For a turn-based game, RGG managed to pull an actual fun experience after going at it a second time and fixed many of Like a Dragon's shortcomings and design flaws, and I love this game for it. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Rebirth With Final Fantasy VII Remake setting the stage for uncharted territory, its successor, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, wastes no time diving into fresh waters. While retaining elements from the original, Rebirth promises a plethora of twists and turns for both new and seasoned players alike. In terms of gameplay, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth offers a significantly expanded experience, blending turn-based action with open-world exploration on a grand scale. With a multitude of side activities awaiting discovery, guiding Cloud and company through this vibrant and often humorous adventure offers endless possibilities. While some may feel hesitant about the alterations to the original storyline, others will find Rebirth's approach to the remake a breath of fresh air. For those seeking a visually stunning world to immerse themselves in or craving a new and engaging combat system, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth stands out as one of the top choices among PS5 games available today. Returnal as one of Sony's big hitters for the PS5, Returnal is definitely going to grab the attention of gamers who might not have dabbled in roguelikes before. But let me tell you, diving into its tough gameplay, ever-changing levels, and that whole start over when you die deal can be a real eye-opener. Still, once you get sucked into Returnal's alien world and start grinding through a few cycles, it's hard to put down. Returnal sticks to Housemark's signature bullet hell style, so every room you enter is going to throw something new at you, and dying means hitting that reset button. But man, with its gripping story and immersive gameplay, plus all the cool features the PS5 offers like 3D audio and DualSense, you'll keep coming back for it. Encounter scavenger fire. Alan Wake 2 in a nutshell, Alan Wake 2 is the sequel we needed but didn't deserve. This title is just a brilliant game and I would encourage all gamers to experience this masterpiece because it is more of an experience than it is a game. It is brilliantly crafted, has fantastic artwork, has a great story and presentation. This game blew me away on so many occasions throughout my experience. There are people who like to hate and those people can hate all they want but don't hate something for being original or because it is not what you are used to. 
as a gamer all my life, I can safely say there are a lack of games with this kind of quality attached. If you prefer an open-world sandbox of a title and everything that comes with it, then great, but if you prefer a story-based game that has a wonderful narrative, is full of atmosphere, mystery, and has some scares to boot, then this game is a must. It is evident that this game was made by very passionate developers, and it is clear that Sam Lake loves the Alan Wake universe as his imprint is all over the Remedy Studios' flagship project. The game was made with care, love, and was made with attention to detail. There are some great nods to Lake's Finnish heritage throughout along with some fantastic Max Payne Easter eggs with the late James McCaffrey voicing both Max Payne and Alex Casey from Alan Wake 2. I would highly recommend this game. Resident Evil 4. I gotta admit, when I heard they were remaking Resident Evil 4, I was skeptical. I mean, how do you improve on a game that's already considered a masterpiece, right? But man, did Capcom prove me wrong. This remake is on a whole other level. See, a lot of remakes these days just focus on sprucing up the graphics and making a few minor tweaks. And don't get me wrong, that's cool and all, but this remake? It's in a league of its own. They took the original Resident Evil 4 as a base and then went to town with it, adding all these modern twists and turns that make it feel fresh and exciting. The chapters and levels? Tighter than ever. And the pacing? Perfect. They managed to cut out the stuff that didn't work while adding in new sections that fit seamlessly with the rest of the game. And let me tell you, the village, the castle, even the island, they've all been revamped and improved beyond belief. But let's talk bosses. They've either been reworked or given a major facelift. But here's the best part. This remake doesn't try to replace the original. It stands alongside it, complementing it in all the right ways. Capcom didn't set out to erase Resident Evil 4 from existence. They wanted to show us what it would look like if it were made today. And they nailed it. <laughs> Devil May Cry 5. One of the best games I have played on the PS5. The combat is so fast-paced and over-the-top. Takes some time to master, but it's worth a try. The characters have also given enough time to shine. The gameplay is so balanced and damn satisfying. The boss fights are made well, and overall this game is worth your money. Go to hell. Ghost of Tsushima Ghost of Tsushima was already a breathtaking experience on the PlayStation 4, but with the director's cut on the PS5, it reaches new heights of visual and gameplay excellence. Playing as Samurai Jean Sakai feels even more immersive and exhilarating, especially with the enhanced performance and stunning 4K visuals that bring Tsushima's landscapes to life in vibrant detail. The addition of features like 3D audio and full Japanese lip sync further enrich the experience, immersing players even deeper into the world of feudal Japan. But perhaps the most exciting addition is the Iki Island story expansion, which takes players to a new and mysterious setting filled with supernatural threats. It's a substantial addition that feels like a mini-sequel in its own right, offering hours of additional gameplay and story content that seamlessly integrates with the main campaign. For fans of Ghost of Tsushima, the director's cut is more than just a visual upgrade. It's a chance to dive back into the world they love and embark on a new adventure that expands upon the original game in meaningful ways. Whether you're a newcomer or a returning player, this enhanced version of Ghost of Tsushima offers an unforgettable journey through feudal Japan that shouldn't be missed. Witcher 3 The Witcher 3 next-gen update was great. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is most definitely one of the best open-world RPGs ever made. The main story really pulls you in and keeps you interested at all times. Side quests are just as interesting as the main story and I would advise anyone playing The Witcher for the first time to play all of the side quests. Don't only go for the main story. Some of the side quests make a massive difference to the ending. The open world is beautiful and each region has a different setting from the Velen swamps and the snowy hills of Skellige. The game gives you so many different choices throughout the game so you really get that role-playing feel. Just when you finish the main story and you think it can't get any better, there are two massive DLCs to play through continuing Geralt of Rivia's story, my favorite being Blood and Wine. Overall, I would recommend this game to pretty much everyone. Baldur's Gate 3 
Baldur's Gate 3 is like living out your wildest Dungeons & Dragons adventure, but on your computer or console. It's got everything you'd want in a fantasy game. You can even play with your friends. The coolest thing about Baldur's Gate 3 is that it feels just like playing Dungeons & Dragons with your buddies. You've got a dungeon master guiding the story, and every choice you make can change how things play out. Plus, you can team up with your pals for even more fun. Exploring ancient ruins, fighting big battles, and solving mysteries, Baldur's Gate 3 has it all. It's like stepping into a whole new world filled with magic and excitement. If you're a fan of Dungeons & Dragons or just love a good RPG, Baldur's Gate 3 is a must-play. It's an epic adventure that'll keep you hooked from start to finish. The console appears dormant. Elden Ring. The wait for Elden Ring felt like forever, but when From Software finally delivered their masterpiece, it was worth every second. Sure, the game is tough as nails, but if you stick with it, you'll find some of the most satisfying combat and exploration around. Elden Ring doesn't hold your hand. It throws you into massive boss fights and a sprawling world without mercy. But that's what makes it so special. Every victory feels earned, every discovery is exciting, and every defeat just pushes you to try again. It's no wonder Elden Ring snagged a perfect 10 out of 10 from gamers and took home the Game of the Year award. It's a game that demands your attention and rewards your perseverance, and it's easily one of the best experiences you can have in gaming. Batman Arkham Knight The thing that always got me with Batman Arkham Knight was the smallest details in the smallest of places. Seriously, you could wander into the tiniest alleyway and find it packed with posters, textures, and little touches that most people would never even notice. But they're still there, adding layers of immersion that never fail to impress. Now, I've gotta break it to you, Batman Arkham Knight hit the scene back in 2015. Yeah, it's starting to show its age a bit, but here's the kicker. It still feels fresh as ever. I mean, seriously, am I the only one who feels like this game just dropped yesterday? Anyway, visually speaking, it's holding up like a champ. The level of detail is still off the charts, stacking up nicely against even the latest and greatest. They really went all out with the visuals in this one. From the muscular characters to the rain-soaked streets, every inch of Gotham City is dripping with detail. And let's talk about those costumes. They're like works of art, with stitching, buckles, and all sorts of little intricacies that make each one unique. And you know what? It works. Normally, that kind of hyper-stylized design might feel a bit over the top, but here, it's perfect. Everything just clicks, especially with all the shiny, reflective surfaces and the perpetual rain adding to the atmosphere. Sure, it might not be pushing the boundaries of 8K resolution or ray tracing, but come on, just look at it. Whether you're playing on console or PC, Batman Arkham Knight still looks damn good. Trust me, I've replayed it many times, and it never fails to impress no matter what platform you're on. Infamous Second Son this game is an absolute blast no matter which path you choose, hero or villain. Released back in 2014, it's impressive how it still holds up with its amazing graphics and gameplay. But what really sets this game apart is its emotional depth. It's a roller coaster of emotion, with moments of comedy, action, friendship, and betrayal all woven together seamlessly. It's the ultimate power fantasy, allowing you to unleash your wildest abilities and wreak havoc on your enemies. Want to take down oppressive government agents with scalding smoke? You got it. How about zipping around at the speed of light? Yep, that's on the table too. And let's not forget about the epic swordplay. Pulling a sword out of a freaking TV and going full-on explosive armature? Absolutely epic. Now, I'll be honest, the concrete power might not be the most thrilling option. But hey, each power has its own strengths and super attacks that pack a serious punch. Except for concrete which unfortunately gets overshadowed towards the end of the game. But despite any shortcomings, the powers in this game are strong and versatile, offering endless possibilities for creative gameplay. And let's face it, there's something undeniably satisfying about unleashing devastating super attacks and watching your enemies crumble before you. 
as Dusk Falls is all about choices. After all, the main thing you do in the game is to make decisions that heavily impact how every scene plays out. Even choices that seem small sometimes end up being really important. So, you get plenty of influence over the main storyline. The tale revolves around two families who meet on one fateful day in 1998. The first half of the adventure shows what happened on that day. The second half is set many years later and shows how the events impacted those involved. It is a really well-done interactive story game. The decisions you make along the way really feel impactful, and there are many possible outcomes. You really grow to care for the main characters you play with and even some of the side ones. The graphics are a combination of beautifully static-drawn characters with 3D environments. And the fact that you can play the game together with up to seven other friends, either locally or online, Stop! Heavy Rain is an interactive narrative adventure that revolves around a serial killer called the Origami Killer. You play as a few different protagonists committed to figuring out the identity of the killer and putting an end to their crimes. Their level of success depends on you. Your choices and button-pressing skills impact how each protagonist's story plays out. As a result, there are several different endings you can get. The game is really well done, and I loved the characters in it, even the bad guy. The game made me really think about what I would do if I had to make the same choices. I highly recommend this game if you love a good storyline and a murder mystery. This game is really unique. The story is touching, characters are likable, graphics are okay. Well, this is a 15-year-old game and voice acting is top-notch. I will not spoil this game for you, but I'm just going to say it has 17 endings, which is mind-blowing. Every available man to find Ethan Mars. If he moves... The Wolf Among Us was the first ever Telltale game I played. The game's pacing, writing, atmosphere, and general mythos are all top-notch. All of the characters are interesting, and it's honestly fun figuring out and identifying which folklore the character originates from. If you like mysteries, violent noir fiction, detectives, and their atmosphere, this game is for you. It does not have much to offer in terms of gameplay being rather a simple point-and-click detective game at its core, but the visual design of this game is so beautiful. I have to say, this game has the best comic-style cell shading application I've seen in games so far. The music is so soothing and alluring, and the characters and story are so captivating that you will find yourself on a cliffhanger at the end of the first episode in no time, hungry for continuation. It is a mature story that takes place in a noir setting. The Wolf Among Us is a gritty take on various fairy tale characters that have somehow escaped into our world and are secretly living among us. No need to kick up a fuss. I'm looking at a three foot toad. Telltale's The Walking Dead is more of a collection of games than a single one. This is because there are four seasons of this narrative adventure experience, along with a couple of spin offs. The main seasons focus on young Clementine, who finds herself amid a zombie apocalypse. Her primary goal is simply to survive. To accomplish that, you need to make a litany of difficult decisions that impact her and the people around her. They don't all have a significant effect, but the biggest ones usually do. Though it feels more like an interactive story than an actual game, just like The Wolf Among Us, it still got me from the first minute. There is not much gameplay in it. You walk here and there and talk to other people, and every now and then you need to make choices. For most of them, there is a short time limit. There are a lot of likable and not so likable characters. Some people may argue that your choices don't actually matter, and I'd say they are not wrong, but they are not right either. The choices you make in the game may not have an impact on the end itself, but they will have an impact on how the story gets told to you. Will you become a respectable man, or will you be a pain in the arse throughout the entire game? The choice is yours. I want to build a fence. Yeah. Beyond Two Souls is a must-play. Even now in 2024, 11 years after the first release. It's still up there with what modern story interactive-driven games have to offer us. What's special about it is the game's ability to keep you glued to the screen from start to end. A truly original story that, for the most part, is unpredictable and combines elements of suspense, drama, emotion, and action, often all at the same time. Some of the best and most fitting voice acting that syncs well with the scenes and cutscenes in the game, all tied together with a great soundtrack. This game is simply amazing. One of the best games I've ever played. Great portrayal of the main character and what she had to go through. The story is suspenseful. It's a very exciting game, with many possible endings. I should be flattered. Yeah, I'm gonna shake some hands, blend in, find some more quiet. Hitman, while not particularly thought of as a choice-based game, Hitman 3 is entirely dictated by how you decide to play. On every level, there are several ways to take down your targets, and some are very different from one another. For instance, in the Dartmoor mission, you can conduct an entire murder investigation, 
including talking to suspects and finding clues, and it's all completely optional. Plus, you're required to make a big choice at the end of the game. That's one big clue to look out for when it comes to the conclusion. There's even a secret ending to unlock, making for a total of three. Granted, you are still killing targets, but the maps throw in some cool moments like the murder mystery or the 10 targets you have to find on your own without any help from Diana. Spec Ops The Line. It's been, what, 13 years since we got this masterpiece of a game, and it still lingers in my mind from time to time. We will never again get anything like this, especially the story part, which to this game holds up very well. Spec Ops The Line is a third-person shooter game set in a post-apocalyptic Dubai. You play as Captain Martin Walker, leading a Delta Force team into the city to search for Colonel John Conrad and his missing battalion, who were sent to evacuate civilians after a devastating sandstorm. As Walker progresses, he faces moral dilemmas, questioning his mission and his own sanity as he discovers the horrors of Conrad's actions and the consequences of his own choices. The game explores themes of morality, the effects of war on individuals, and the blurred lines between heroism and villainy. This third-person shooter has solid gameplay and decent enough mechanics and graphics for the time it was released. But the main meat of the game is its story, and man, it will hit you like a freight train if you are not ready for it. It is incredibly, relentlessly depressing and never lets up. It is very well told and goes into the horrors of Middle East conflicts for both soldiers and especially civilians in a way no game ever has and probably never will again. You will be forced to make some really messed up choices for the story so be warned, though you will get an incredible story you will never experience elsewhere if you can stick through it. This game is an underrated masterpiece. At first, I did not enjoy it as I was very confused, but as I continued on, it became clearer. This is a game that will not leave my head and I will be thinking back to it as I play other games. I really hope that the game will be viable again, because everyone needs to experience this at least once. 20 out of 10 for me, truly incredible, and I will never play it again, yet can't recommend it enough. <laughs> the Order 1886. Although the game went through undue negative press before launch, largely due to claims of the game being only five hours, this is not really the case for a standard playthrough and is more representative of an early speedrun. It's a shame this happened as it was partly to blame for low initial sales, most likely eliminating the chance for a sequel. The Order 1886 is not a bad game, especially in its current heavily discounted state. It is a highly cinematic third-person adventure set in a unique alternative history mixing Arthurian legend and steampunk. The gameplay is rather streamlined, and the game itself is very linear with no multiplayer. While this may turn some off as it doesn't hold much replay value, it is evident that all resources were put into laying the groundwork for a fleshed out universe and a superb level of fidelity so early in the PS4's life cycle. The core gameplay loop is made up of third person combat, light exploration, and quick time mechanics, as well as mini game mechanics such as lock picking and the like. The Order 1886, a decade old game, still looks better than most games. Released back in 2015 on the PS4, played this back when it came out and now again on PS5, but seriously, how does this game still look so good? Everyone at Ready at Dawn should be commended. I don't think another game since has matched the look of this. The film grain, depth of field, lens scratches, soft focus. This game has a cinematic, filmic look that has never been duplicated and looks simply amazing. If you're looking for intensely deep gameplay, a super long campaign, or a highly interactive world, you may come away a bit disappointed. However, those looking for a cinematic action experience with top-of-the-line graphics, excellent world building, characters, and story will find much to like. It is truly a shame how much negative press this game received as not only did it hurt the game's sales, but has deprived us all of what would almost certainly have been an expanded and much improved sequel. With much of the groundwork done, Another The Order would have been able to focus on every element criticized in the first game easily. Those of us who enjoyed The Order can only imagine what would have been, had there not been an overblown pre-launch controversy spreading like wildfire. I highly recommend anyone to at least give this game a fair shake and explore a universe we may likely never visit again. Is this the England we want? What must we do? Quantum Break I am very surprised that the game didn't make more of a splash when it came out than it did, 
Remedy is an amazing developer as usual, but this game had some amazing things going for it. An actually coherent and interesting time travel story, tragic characters, twists, and overall kept me way more hooked than I thought. Gameplay is simple yet a lot of fun and really satisfying. It really makes you feel like you're in a movie. The TV show is surprisingly well done and well acted. Much better than most TV today. Although, I'm not sure I like the show being pushed in between levels and the bad. The platforming section sucked. The controls were floaty and didn't feel good. And there was no skill to them. So why do them? It was odd why they were even in the game. Rarely had to use your brain to figure it out either. They could have done some crazy puzzles with the time stuff but failed. Overall, a really solid game that I wish more people got to experience. Not perfect, but so much more polished and filled with passion than 80% of the games as service crap that we get nowadays. Plus, it tried something really unique by melding the TV show with games. It wasn't a perfect fit, but I give them credit for trying. Check the game out if you haven't yet. Metro Exodus. To be 100% honest, I didn't like Metro Exodus when I first tried it. It took me restarting the game at least five times to stick with it to the end. I think one reason for this was because I had literally just finished Metro Last Light. Going from a more level-based shooter to such a dense open world so soon was very jarring. So, I put Metro Exodus down for a few months. But when I did finally finish the game, Metro Exodus became my favorite of the trilogy. I think the devs did a fantastic job translating the gunplay of the original titles to a more open world framework. The Metro game's signature, I think, is how weighty and tense combat feels in claustrophobic environments. Metro Exodus seemingly abandoned much of the claustrophobia by going open world, except not really. You're still gonna find yourself in these moments where you're surrounded on all sides by monsters and having to tiptoe around to avoid being torn to shreds. And you're still having intense shootouts. I played the latest upgraded edition on PC, maxed out everything for the most part. The game is a beast a visual showcase. My only complaint is not getting a lot of the forest environment you encounter in the second to last area. My favorite section of the game is actually the last metro section. There's something very haunting about seeing those old Russia apartment buildings covered in sheer ice and snow, wondering what could be staring down at you through those black windows, and then having to crawl through those subways and sewers. That last section was truly the signature on this love letter of a game. A 10 out of 10 masterpiece. Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 is getting close to 7 years old now. And damn. This is not just the game of the year. It's the game of the century for me, no doubt. This game came out in 2018, and we are now in a new console generation. But I still can't think of any game that looks better than RDR2. Been replaying it on my PC, and even though it's a last-gen game, it's still more beautiful to look at than games like Spider-Man 2 and Assassin's Creed Mirage which have actual next-gen versions. I just hope Rockstar gives a proper enhanced version for RDR2 on PS5 like they did with GTA 5, but sadly it's like they have moved on from RDR2 for now, at least. Anyways, Red Dead 2 isn't the best-looking game ever because it gets the big things right. Red Dead 2 is the best-looking game ever because it gets the little things right. The leaves, the blades of grass, the playing cards, the hammer on your gun, the grain in the wood of the train track, that's what the next generation of consoles is all about, and Rockstar already beat them to the punch. This is what putting an insane amount of money into a game gets you. It's still the best-looking, most detailed, and immersive in so many ways it's still mind-blowing. Rockstar is one generation ahead of the competition. GTA V came out for PS3 yet competed against PS4 releases years after it came out. RDR2 felt like a ninth-gen game when it came out. I can't fathom what GTA 6 will look like. That's all. Subscribe if you love these games.